Hello, welcome to Prigem Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 72 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about the Windows Event Viewer. Whenever there is an exception in ASP.NET web application, we handle that. We have seen how to do that using try-catch blocks, using error events like page underscore error and application underscore error. Once we handle an exception, we want to log it somewhere so that the developers can work on a fix for those exceptions. Now to log exceptions, we can log them to a database table or to the Windows Event Viewer. In this session, we'll discuss about what the Windows Event Viewer is all about. And then in a later video session, we will see how to log the exceptions to that Windows Event Viewer. Now to get to the Windows Event Viewer, there are two ways. The first way is click on the Start button, right click on Computer and click on Manage. That should bring up the computer management vendor from which we can select Windows Event Viewer. So I have the Event Viewer there. That's one way. Another way is click on the Start button, type Run and then press Enter. That should bring up the Run vendor. Within the Run window, type Event Viewer and click OK. So that should also bring up the Windows Event Viewer. Now if you look at this Windows Event Viewer, there's a folder for Windows Logs. And if I expand that folder, you should see some built-in Windows logs there. Application-related logs, security-related logs, system-related logs, etc. Now let's quickly see what these logs contain. Now application logs, as the name states, this application log is going to contain information related to applications like Microsoft Office, SQL Server, Visual Studio, etc. And security log is going to contain information related to security like user sign-ons, access checks, etc. And system logs contain information about you know system drivers, system service failures, etc. Now Whenever there is an exception within an ASP.NET web application, I can log the information about that exception to these logs within Event Viewer if I want to. So for example, if there is an exception in a website that I am developing, I can log that exception information to this application log. Look at that. This application is showing currently uh, the log, the information related to the applications that are installed on this, com on this computer. For example, there is an information log from Office Software Protection Platform. Maybe this is related to Microsoft Office. And there is another log from Microsoft SQL Server. Okay, so if you want, it's also possible to filter these logs. Currently, there are 13,172 logs in the application log. So I can right click and I can say filter current log. And then look at this. Um, I want only the errors maybe, which, are, which can be classified ex exceptions and warnings. So I can se just select those two, click OK, and the filter is applied here. So currently it's only showing uh, errors and warnings and 1683 of those are there. Okay. Similarly, if I want to clear these logs, I can simply select clear log and I can either save them and then clear or simply clear them. Okay. Now, instead of creating, let's say for example, I'm developing an ASP.NET web application, instead of logging the exception information to the application, built-in application log here, I can create my own custom log within this Windows Event Viewer. For example, let's say we are developing a website called PragimeTech.com. All exceptions related to PragimeTech.com, I want to log those within a custom log, you know, maybe by name PragimeTech.com. So let us see how to create a custom Windows log and then log all our website related exceptions under that log rather than mixing them with all the other application logs here. Okay, so in this session, we'll see how to build a Windows application that can be used to create this custom log. Now, in the Event Viewer, you cannot simply right-click and say, create a new cust log. You know, that's not possible. You have to edit the registry keys for that. But instead of doing that, you know, the Microsoft.NET Framework provides us with a class and a method that can be used easily to create a custom uh, Windows log. Let's see how to do that. So I have created a simple Windows application here and I dragged and dropped two label controls, two text boxes and a button control. And then I have given a nice text to this button, create event log and event source. By the way, let's understand what we mean by event source. Now, if you look at the event viewer here, now whenever I select, if you look at this application log, look at that, it's showing the source. Source is nothing but the application that has logged that information. For example, let me remove that filter. 
So if I remove those filters, look at that. This log is written by Microsoft SQL Server application. Okay, so basically source is the application that has written that log there. Okay, so we want to create the source, the custom source. So for example, let's say we are going to develop a website called Prajim Tech. So I want the source to be Prajim Tech. So we are going to create that source and then the log like this application security system instead of them I want a, a, a uh, log name called Prajim Tech Log. Let's see how to do that. It's actually just one line of code that we have to write to do that. Okay, so the user whoever want, is going to run this application they're going to provide the event log name in this text box and the source name in this text box and then they will click this button. That's when I want to create that custom log and custom source name. And to do that, um, I have to use a class, okay? There's a class in system.diagnostics namespace, and the class name is event log. And this class has got a method create event source. And this class, all it takes is two parameters, the source name and the log name, okay? So what is the log name that you want, and what is the name of your source? That's all. So I'm going to, and, and that is of type string. So this source, I'm going to call the source as prajimtech.com. That's our, that's the website that we are going to build. And what is the log name? Um, we'll call that as logs. That's it. Okay, but then instead of hard coding them like that, we will retrieve them from these text boxes. Okay, and so obviously to do that, first we need to verify if txt, actually, I've given them names. If you look at the form here, if I go to the properties, you should see the name of the text box, event log name text box. So let's go to the code behind there. event log name text box dot text okay so if that is not equal to string dot empty and along the same lines event log source text box dot text not equal to string dot empty if they are not empty then we want to create the event source and then instead of hard coding those values I'm going to get the event log name from event log name text box that's the second parameter and event log source from the event log source text box that's the first parameter so we're going to pass that there and specify the text property and along the same lines here we are going to specify the text property that's it and then maybe we want to show a message to the user so we can make use of the message box so message box dot show so we can simply say event log and source created so if they are empty then maybe we want to say event log and source are required Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. So now once we have the application, all we have to provide is I want to give the um, log name as Prajim Tech and the source name is Prajim Tech.com. Okay. So once I click this, you should see that message event log and source created. I click OK. Now, if I come here and expand this, we might not see it there. If that's the case, close the event viewer and open it once again. And once that opens, if we just go and expand this, now it's actually working on that. It will expand and we should see the log that we have just created. We have created a log with name Prajim Tech. So we should see that. So it's taking a bit of time to open that. 
So you should see that log Prajim tag. And currently, this Prajim tag log doesn't contain anything. In the next video session, we'll actually see how to add exceptions, you know, to this log here. So anytime there is an exception, and when we log it using our application that gets logged into this Prajim tag. And anytime the developers can come, check the log, fix those bugs, and clear them if they want to. Okay, now since we have seen how to create the log itself, if you want to delete the log, then there is a very simple method. Again, uh, this class has got a very simple method. So event log class has got another static method called delete. And if you look at this, if you pass in the log name, for example, if you want to delete the Prajim tech log, all you have to do is pass in the log name and it gets deleted. Okay. So in this video session, we have seen how to create our own custom Windows log and custom source. In the next video session, we'll see how to log exceptions to that uh, custom Windows log. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.